My name is Paul Wolliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. And this is the installation instruction video for the propane or dual fuel version of generators running the Zonson 224cc engine. For the purpose of this video, I will be using the WEN 4800 dual fuel generator to show the instruction procedure. Uh, the very first step is going to be to take the flash drive included in the kit and plug that into your computer and play the video, the appropriate video, excuse me. If you're running the gasoline only version, run the or watch the gasoline only installation instructions. If you're working on a propane or dual fuel version, make sure to watch the propane or dual fuel version of the instructions. They are just different enough that it is critically important. Incidentally, if you are watching this video on YouTube and you'd like to get more information about it, look in the description section below the video and you'll see a link how to get in touch with me at my website. Uh, get in touch with me by email or phone or whatever. Please do not attempt to contact me by YouTube or by any of the chat rooms. I do not monitor the YouTube comments. I do not monitor any chat rooms. I simply don't have time. If you've got a comment that you'd like to leave that's relevant to this video, then definitely go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. But if you need to contact me, please do it through email on my website at pinellaspowerproducts.com. If you don't see the information that you're looking for either in one of the videos on my website or in the text about this product on my website, I am available by email or by phone. Uh, other than that, this generator is very small, very compact. So when you're working on installing your kit, take your time, go slow and easy, don't get in a hurry. It doesn't matter how long you take as long as the product works perfectly when you're done. So if it takes longer than you expected or longer than it does for me in the video, it's not a race. You just want it to work perfectly. You don't necessarily want it to be done quickly. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I want to touch on a few of the characteristics of the propane or dual fuel version real quickly before we get started. Uh, number one, this is the propane inlet port right down here in the front. And anytime the propane tank is hooked up, the generator will try to run off of propane. And if it's running off of propane and you run out of propane, the generator will run out of fuel and stall even if the gasoline tank is full. I know that in the owner's manual they tell you it's an automatic switchover or automatic fuel source selection, not totally automatic. Anytime it's hooked up, it automatically goes to propane. That's the extent of it. When you're running it on gasoline, you'd move it to the run or move the fuel selector knob to the run position. When you're running it on my remote tank, you must put the fuel in the off position. And I want to go into a couple of details on that right now. Uh, so the first step of the install is to pull this side cabinet off. And to do that, you simply loosen up these two screws. And they're captive screws. They won't fall out onto the ground. Or excuse me, they're not supposed to fall out on the ground. And you'll set this cover off to the side. The next step is going to be to remove this cover. And that's held on with two screws also. One of the things I like about what they've done with this is all the cabinet screws are identical. So it doesn't matter which screws you pulled out of where, they're all, all the cabinet screws are identical. So now you will lift this cover out. And just to make the explanation easier, I'm going to remove this little cover plate. This particular screw is slightly different. In my own defense, it's not part of the cabinet. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with that. It's not part of the cabinet. That's why I said that. Okay. And I'm just taking this apart so that you can see more clearly. Okay, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to explain just how this system works for the gasoline. Uh, we're not going to get into propane because the propane is covered in the owner's manual and they do a very good job of it and we're not going to be messing with the propane portion of it. You've got the engine off position and that has the fuel shut off and the spark shut off. Then you've got the fuel off only and that still has spark but it has the fuel shut off. Then you have the run position and that's where you would normally run the generator and then you have choke position. So we'll say you walk up to the generator and you'd turn the knob all the way to the choke position. You'd start it, then you'd move it to the run position and you'd be good to go. And that doesn't matter whether you're running it on propane or gasoline. However, if you're running it on gasoline, we'll start with the off position, you would move it to the choke position, you would start it, then you would move it to the run position and run it, and then if you're going to be storing it, you would move the fuel to the fuel off position and run it till it ran out of fuel and stalled. And that way you don't have fuel oxidizing in the float bowl. And then once it stalls, you'd go ahead and move the fuel selector valve all the way to the off position. And that would be good for storing. Um, when has what they call an auto fuel selection system. And real quickly, what that means is any time that there is a, uh, a propane tank hooked up to the propane, it is biased to pull fuel from the propane and not the gasoline system at all. And if you are running on propane and the propane tank becomes empty, the generator will run out of fuel and then stall. Uh, if you are running it off of gasoline, the way it works is, if you look down here, you'll see that there are two fuel hoses on the bottom of the fuel tank. And this hose, right down here, the lower one, is the full fuel pickup. And what it's going to do is, with the fuel selector valve in the run position, it's going to run fuel out of the lower hose, through the fuel selector valve, from the fuel selector valve, there's a hose hidden right behind this panel. Behind here is a fuel pump. Then coming out of the fuel pump, it will come out through this center hose right here. It'll go into this Y connector. And what happens is, it then puts fuel into the float bowl of the carburetor. When the needle and seat closes, because the fuel level is at the right amount, any excess fuel comes through this hose returns through the fuel selector valve, which shuts off the fuel pickup and the fuel return, and is returned through this hose back into the tank. So that way, even if this generator is running on propane, you have fuel, instead of the fuel being pulled out of the tank and run into the carburetor and burned, Fuel is running a circular path through the fuel pump, back through this return line, back through the fuel selector valve, and back into here. With the generator having my fuel kit installed, you will start it in the choke position, and as soon as it is running, you will move it to the fuel off position. So then it is pulling from the remote tank only. And let me explain it this way. If you were to put it in the on position or run position, what would happen is it would pull all the fuel out of the stock tank and as soon as the stock tank was empty it would run out of fuel because it would start pulling air from the stock tank and stall. So you have to have this in the fuel off position. With it in the fuel off position it can only pull from my remote tank. If you are running it off of my remote tank and you have inadvertently placed the remote tank higher than the generator and you have inadvertently left the fuel selector valve in the 
on or run position, it is then possible that it could pull fuel from the stock tank or the remote tank. And then it would go around through the fuel selector valve, up through this line to the fuel pump, back through here, and excess fuel would be returned through the fuel selector valve and through the return line so that it would try to transfer the fuel from the remote tank into this little one and a half gallon tank. What would then happen is it would overfill this one and a half gallon tank, it would come out through the fuel vent line into the air box and into the main bore of the carburetor, it would flood out and stall. That's why it's critical that when you are running off of my remote tank that you have it in the fuel off position. If you had the remote tank level with the generator as opposed to inadvertently placing it higher than the generator and you had it in this position then of course it would suck fuel from the stock tank and stall. So at any rate just remember that if you're running it off the stock tank fuel selector valve should be in the run position and if you're running it off of my remote tank the fuel selector valve should be in the fuel off position and anytime the propane tank is connected up it's never going to run off of gasoline it's only going to run off of propane and an empty propane tank will cause it to run out of fuel and stall. My kit comes with a decal and this is explained in the decal in real quick easy notes. I would like to point out at this time that step 7 on the decal is not a misprint. Step 7 says to put the fuel selector valve in the off position and that's anytime you're running it on my remote tank fuel selector valve must be in the off position. Do not forget that step. That is the main tech question I get for people calling in. They put the generator away for a year or whatever, they pull it out and they forgot that step and they forgot to read the decal, which, as I stated earlier, step seven. Uh, there we go. Move the fuel selector valve on the generator to the off position. Uh, and let's go ahead and start on the install. Okay. To install the fuel kit, the first step will be, remember there's a hose hidden right behind this panel that comes from the fuel selector valve and goes up to the fuel pump. You can probably see it better if you come around here. And what I'm going to do is reach in and pop that hose out of the groove. So here's the hose I'm talking about right here in my fingers. And you'll notice that it's in two little clips that hold it in place. If you look from, the, from this corner in at a 45 degree angle, so in other words, right parallel with this, right here is where you're going to go ahead and cut that hose, right at this location. So I'm going to pull that hose out and cut it right here. And I'm marking it with my finger. pull it out where you can get at it and go ahead and cut it at that location. Make sure that the fuel selector valve is in the off position first that way it won't drip as much fuel. Be prepared that you will drip some fuel. If the generator has been run it's going to have some fuel in this hose. So you're going to go ahead and cut the hose and you notice it dripped just a little bit of fuel. Then what we're going to do is Included in a small bag of parts over here. There's a 3 16 T connector. And in the kit, there's a section of 3 16 hose. I'm going to go ahead and put the hose onto the center barb of the T connector in advance here. It makes it a lot easier if you use just a little bit of oil on the uh, hose barb to assemble it. Makes it a lot easier to put it together. And 
And then we're going to put the T connector into this hose. If you look at the hose when you pull it out, let me just go ahead and pull it out and show it to you. There's a protective sleeve strain relief around the hose. So you want to make sure when you put that hose on that the hose itself is definitely slid all the way in place on the T-connector and then the protective sleeve goes up over it too. But you don't want to just have the protective sleeve on. So I'll show you right here. We slid back and you'll see the hose and the protective sleeve are over the T-connector. And we're going to do the same thing for the short section coming off of the fuel selector valve. Okay, so now if you look at this, you'll see that the hose and the sleeve is all the way up to the hilt on the uh, 3 16 T connector. Now what I'm going to do is put small clamps. The kits come with two sizes of clamps. They've got the larger clamps that look like this. Those are for the quarter inch hose. The smaller clamps look like this, and that's for the 3 16 hose. So we'll take three of the smaller clamps, and we're going to go ahead and put them on the, uh, the 3 16 hose. I'm going to put the center with the clasping portion facing away from me, and then the other two with the clasping portion facing up. So this is the first one. And the clasp on that. Pull this up so I can get at it. I get just a little bit of engagement here. So that's on nice and snug. Then I'll do the upper and lower hoses. And on these I'm going to be clamping it around the protective sleeve and the hose. That way the protective sleeve is held in place and it'll engage the hose barb so it's not going to slide off. The bottom one is done the exact same way. You may not be able to see it on camera as well. However, it's put on the same way. So now, if you remember, there are two clips right about here and here that that hose snaps into. And you'll push the hose back into the clips. 
and there you can see our three clamps and our uh, connector. Okay, so this is the 3 16 hose. What I'm going to do is route it up because keeping in mind that the recoil start rope comes up at an angle and we don't want this hose to get anywhere near the recoil start rope or to uh, get cut on these clamps. So look at the clamps that are on the factory hoses and this would be the return line and rotate the clamps wherever they need to be so that they don't risk cutting the uh, 3 16 fuel hose. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3 16 hose and route it just behind the return line but in front of the fuel pickup line. So it comes right through here. And the stock hose is snapped right into the little bracket there. So now you can see there's the clamps. And then it runs right between the stock fuel pickup and the stock fuel return. Then we're going to run it behind the propane line here. Run it all the way around here. What I'm going to do is take one of the zip ties included in the kit and zip tie this hose to the return line to kind of keep it in position so it does not move. Then we'll cut off the tab. I don't know if that's uh, well lighted enough for you to see or not. It's one of those things, too much light washes it out. Not enough light is not enough. So now you've got the hose that we just installed into our 3 16 fuel connector. Runs between the stock fuel line going to the pump or to the fuel selector valve and behind the return line. Runs over here behind the propane line, behind the uh, float bowl vent tube, behind the main fuel inlet line, and right over to here. Okay. And everything is held in place nicely. So now we're going to take the original stock panel that we unbolted earlier and we're just going to do a test fit. We'll tote or tuck the uh, recoil start rope out of the way and with this we should be able to slide this panel in and it go right back into place without any problems. If you remember when you first pulled the screws out the panel popped out just a little bit because of tension on these tabs. But the way we've got it here, none of the hoses are pinched or anything like that. What I do want to do is make sure that this, where the screw goes through to hold the uh, cover plate for the recoil start, I want to make sure that that does not interfere with our 3 16 hose when we push it in here. And right now you can see that the 3 16 hose is visible right here. So it's not being hit by that. And the recoil start rope is going to go down at an angle. So everything should clear nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to mount our fuel inlet port in here. And we're going to mount it in here so that it is recessed. It doesn't stick out of the cabinet anywhere. 
so you don't snag it on your pant leg or anything like that when you're carrying the generator or transporting it. But then you'll be able to rotate it out like this to hook the fuel line on it to be able to use it when you're ready. So if you look, here's the propane line and the greatest distance between this and the propane line is right about this location and this way it'll allow you to turn the fuel port like this for storage. So what we're going to do is drill our hole right here. We're going to be drilling the hole to where it'll come through here and obviously it's easier to drill from this direction. We just want to make sure to drill it far enough away from this surface that our hex does not conflict with this surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw the hose bar onto the back of the fuel fitting so that there's a gap that sandwiches right around the plastic here. And we do not want to create a pinch point and because of that we will not be using the flat washer that is used on the gasoline only version because the propane version we're mounting the fuel inlet port in this location. So let me go ahead and drill this hole and you'll understand a little better what I'm talking about. Okay. We don't want to go too big with the hole because we just want it to rotate freely. We don't want it to flop around. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. And with the step drills, they're very convenient because you don't have to change drill bits. However, they do make it possible to accidentally drill way too large of a hole. Okay, that's fairly snug. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up just a little bit with a repairman's reamer because I don't want to go way oversized. Okay. So included in the kit is going to be a roll of Teflon tape. You put Teflon tape on the threads where you're going to screw the uh, hose barb to the uh, quick disconnect fitting. When we wrap the tape around it, you want to be very careful not to wrap it over the end like this will be a serious problem because it'll shear off that piece when you thread it together. Now that piece that gets sheared off will be caught in the fuel filter but we don't want to fill the fuel filter full of debris too quickly. So what we're going to do now we're going to put the fuel fitting through the hole we just cut and then we're going to screw the hose barb on to the back side of it. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Now we can tear off our little piece of uh, Teflon tape that we were using to hold it in place to get it started. And you'll notice that the fuel fitting will spin 
into the using position or up into the storage position. So now we're going to go ahead and pull the recoil start rope up. We're going to pass our recoil start rope through the uh, opening here and then the guide is going to go through the opening and then we'll go ahead and screw this down into place using the same screw that we took out when we disassembled it. Okay, now included in the kit is a piece of quarter inch hose. We're going to go ahead and put the piece of quarter inch hose onto this fitting right now because it's a whole lot easier. And we'll put a little bit of oil on the hose barb just to make it easier to assemble. Okay, now keep in mind that we want it to be stored facing up like this. So now we're going to go ahead and rotate the hose so that the natural curve of the hose follows up where it's going to be. And that's where we're going to go ahead and clamp it. So now we're going to go ahead and take one of the large hose clamps included in the kit and put it on right here and snug it down. And now we'll go ahead and insert this panel and make sure that there's no conflicts. And the panel will go right back into place. If you look at this, this is the way it's going to store in the future. You're going to have more stuff in this recessed area, but as you can see, the fuel fitting and the recoil start will fit in there. So now we're going to go ahead and put the two stock screws that were in this panel back in place. and we're going to snug them down. Okay. So now we've got the 3 16 hose here and the quarter inch hose here. We've got two things that we need to do. We need to put a fuel filter in it. So we're going to take the fuel filter and position it to where it rests right about here. So we're going to take our quarter inch hose and we're going to cut it to length to where it will allow the fuel filter to sit there. And what I'm going to do is cut it a little bit longer than I think it needs to be because I can always shorten it if I needed to shorten it. But if I cut it too short, I can't lengthen it. So with this down here, Okay, I'm going to shorten it just a little bit more because the 3 16 hose would come up and then go on the fuel filter here and that's a pretty sharp bend and I don't like that. So with this hose at this length, I'm going to shorten it about one inch. Okay. 
and try this again. Okay, that I like. Let me go ahead and put a little bit of oil on this barb for the uh, fuel filter so I can get it together easier. You'll notice that the fuel filter has arrows on it and they show the direction of the fuel flow. Since the fuel is going to be coming in through the fill fitting and flowing through the filter in this direction, you want the arrows to point this way. The next thing is that you don't really need to see the advertising logo for me. If you rotate the fuel filter to where the window is showing, then you can see if you've got a clogged fuel filter later on for maintenance on the generator. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take and put another one of the larger hose clamps for the quarter inch hose right here. We're going to clamp it down. Then we're going to take the piece of quarter inch hose that we just cut off of this one and put it on this end of the fuel filter. We're going to get just a little bit of oil make it easier to assemble. And then we're going to put another clamp on it. And let me take a moment to show you something about these clamps. And this works for all the clamps, whether you're doing the large ones or the small ones. You're going to put it around the hose, and squeeze together. Now if they squeeze together, and we'll say a little bit crooked, like this or so, you take a pair of pliers and you squeeze side to side and line it up. And then you can squeeze it a little bit further together or whatever. And that works whether it's the large clamp or the small clamp. If you need to remove one of the clamps, it's, if you need to remove one of the clamps, it's very easy. You grip on one side and then just push on the other side. It opens right up. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and tuck our fuel filter back down into here. And I wanted to leave it over to the side so that you can still get at the oil fill cap to check your oil level. So our fuel filter is tucked down here just off to the side out of the way. And our 3 16 hose and our quarter inch hose are going to need to be connected. And they need to clear the stock panel. So we don't want any problem with how they engage in the stock panel. Fortunately, there's nothing here to really obscure them. So if we take, we tuck our filter down in here. like this, and we've got the 3 16 hose and the quarter hose. I'm going to, because I want it, we're going to be using this as a connector for 3 16 to quarter. So we need a straight section, and right under the air filter housing is a straight section. So we're going to go ahead and cut our 3 16 hose right here. Take our adapter and plug it into the 3 16 hose. And then we're going to mark where our quarter inch hose needs to be cut. And we're going to cut it just a little bit longer than we think it's going to need. And that way, when we go to put it together, if it's too long, we can always cut it a little shorter, but if it's too short, we'd have to start all over again to lengthen it. Okay, so this can tuck into here nicely, or this can actually run across the top of the air box, and it's a nice smooth flow. So now we're going to take one of the large hose clamps, we're going to put the large hose clamp on the larger hose, 
And I'm going to face the clamping portion down because there's more clearance right below this line on the air box for the clamping portion to fit into. Okay. Then we will take a small hose clamp and we will put it onto the 3 16 hose and clamp it down. So now it's all in place nicely. And the cover will close on. If you would like to bend it right down here, it will tuck in here nicely. In fact, I actually like that better than having it run across the corner of the air filter. So now what we're going to do is put zip ties in the appropriate locations to hold everything where we wanted it. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and clamp around the stock Y connector and my 3 16 hose. If I get my fingers back in there. Like such. And this doesn't have to be real tight. Just, just, just snug enough to hold the, the hoses into place where you're going to put it when you get ready to assemble the cabinet. Then I'll go ahead and cut off this end. As you can see, everything tucks in here nicely. Then we want to shine the flashlight right in through here. And you may not see it with the camera, but we want to make sure that none of those hoses comes anywhere near the recoil start rope. And we're good on this. You can also look in from this direction. The camera is too big to fit in there, but if you look in there, you can see that the recoil start rope does not touch any of our hoses, which is extremely important. Okay, that would conclude the installation itself, and now we'll start putting the cabinet back together. Okay, so now that we've got the kit installed, the next step is to inspect everything and then put the cabinet together. What you need to do is take a flashlight and shine in and make sure that there are no wiring harnesses or hoses or the recoil start rope that are going to hit anything else and cause a problem. Keep in mind that this front cover actually holds the fuel tank in place. So in order to put the front cover on, you're going to need to lift up on the threaded portion of the tank where the gas cap screws on and then very carefully slide the front cover over the propane port and around these handlebars and push it into place. And remember that the cabinet on this particular generator fits very, very well. So if it doesn't go on smoothly, there's a mistake in the assembly. Okay, so now we've got this side in place. We're going to go ahead and put the center screw into the cabinet. And then we will go around to the other side and put the center screw there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and push this side cabinet on and put this center screw in place. And then what we'll do is we'll push the bottom in place, put the bottom screws on, and so forth. So, I will push the bottom screw, or push the bottom of the cabinet in. 
We'll put the bottom screw in. Then I'll push the top of the cabinet into place. Push the top, or put the top screw in. Then I left the center screw loose at first, and we'll go ahead and snug that down. Check all three screws, and then we'll go back to the other side. Okay. So now I'm going to put the top screw in this side. Then I'll put the bottom screw down by the propane port. And then I'll snug them down. And remember, as I stated earlier, the fit and finish of the cabinet on this generator is incredibly good. So if anything doesn't look perfect, slide it back out. Just take a few extra seconds and slide it back out and correct the issue. The next step will be to put the orange cover on. And the easiest way to do is just look at this little cutaway at an angle. That goes to the front of the generator. Once you put the orange cover on, you'll put the threaded retainer for the fuel cap on. And that's this. And you'll go ahead and tighten it down by hand. No special tools required. Then go ahead and put the fuel cap on. Then as you remember, there were four screws that held the orange cover on. We'll put these two in loosely. And we'll go around the other side and put the other two in loosely. Once they're all four in, we'll go ahead and snug them down. The next part of the install will to make sure or be to make sure that everything in this side of the cabinet is in place correctly. Go ahead and insert the two bottom tabs. Then there are two push connectors that you just tap with your thumb and then tighten down the screws. As I discussed earlier, there is an instruction decal that explains exactly how to use the generator with the fuel kit installed. I'd like to mention once again that step seven is not a misprint. So we're going to go ahead and put the instructions right here next to the fuel selector knob and recoil start rope. So it's nice and easy to see. If you're watching this video on YouTube, look in the description section below and you'll see how to get to my website to get the full information about this kit. If you have any questions whatsoever, please email me at my email address. Do not attempt to contact me through the YouTube. I do not monitor YouTube comments or any chat rooms whatsoever. I simply don't have the time. However, if you go to my website, contact me through email, you'll get a response very quickly, like within 30 minutes usually. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to contact me. If you'd like to leave a relevant comment that doesn't require a response from me, go ahead and leave comments about the video, but just don't ask questions because you'll, you'll be waiting for a long time to get the answer on them. Other than that, uh, I thank you for your time. And please go to my website and have a look.